Well, hello. My name is Pam, and this here is my cockatoo, Turkey. Turkey is at least 45 years old, and I have owned him for 35 years. And today, I want to talk about if your bird starts bleeding, say from the toenails or, um, or his beak. I'm not going to get into the feathers today, but uh, I'm bringing this up because this weekend, Turkey, he lost his balance and he fell. And he fell and it just hit his beak perfectly where it chipped the end of it off. It broke and he was bleeding quite a bit. Um, where I live in this town, um, it was the weekend and even if it's not the weekend, I don't have a real avian vet to get him into real close. So you really need to know what to do in case of an emergency. And he's done this a couple times and, uh, and his beak has bled quite a bit. And this time it actually looked worse than it had ever looked before, but actually it was less worse than he's done it before. But uh, the bottom tip broke off. And so what I did is I just applied flour to it. Uh, he gets very stressed. A bird gets very stressed when they're bleeding. And uh, they don't like you to touch it or, you know, it just naturally, even in the wild, or it's just a characteristic of birds that when they're ill, they try to hide their illness. And he, he had done this before, so I knew what to do. Um, they do recommend putting pressure on it and like, I don't know how to pronounce it, but styptic powder or whatever, but cornstarch, always have cornstarch or flour. I've used that for uh, nails. Like I've accidentally cut his nails a little bit too short and it's bled some, not a lot, just a little bit. But I'll just take some flour or cornstarch corn and just like hold it in my finger and pinch it to his nail and it does stop. And this weekend, I just took in a little measuring, like a flat flour measuring cup. I put some flour in and then held it by him and he actually like bit into the cup. And I was holding at first two flour in between my fingers and putting it up to his beak and it did stop pretty quick. And luckily so, because birds do not have a lot of blood to lose. And I could see it was nothing major. His beak didn't crack all the way up. And so I, I pretty much, I knew he, he would be fine. When he's done this before, it's hard for them, and, and it has been this, this weekend, to get around in the cage. So you want to keep them low to the bottom of the cage because you don't want them to fall on their fall again and uh, damage the beak further. And so uh, they rely on their beaks to get around the cage, the bars. So he couldn't really do any of that. But he has bounced back really, really quick. Uh, it was not to where he needed vet care. Um, in fact, he's trying to bite me and he bit these earrings off this morning and bent the post. So he's he's really milking it. He, uh, it's trying to act worse than what it was. And so uh, he's milking it for all he can get. But uh, I do wanna tell you, picking, feather picking, was actually, that's the root cause. Like when you get to the very bottom of it, he, he has, I'm gonna pause this real quick. He has to go potty. Okay, sorry about that. He was um, he was being a brat and he wouldn't go. But he usually hollers out when he has to go potty. But getting down to that, the real reason he loses his balance and falls is because he's feather picked so much that, lift up your wings, buddy. Let's see. See, he doesn't have any wings to balance with and no 
tail feathers whatsoever. So his balance is really bad. So now and then he does take a tumble. But as you can see, his beak is fine. So it is a little bit tender. And if this happens to your bird, I mean, if it's very bad at all, I mean, it's really good if you can get them to the vet because uh, their beaks can crack all the way up and they'll need to have it repaired. So luckily I've been fortunate whenever he's done it, nothing like that has ever happened. But I just wanna make people aware always to know how to uh, do first aid on your bird. Uh, bleeding especially, yeah. And if they lose too much blood, they can go into shock. I mean, you just, you just have to really be careful with it. So he's a real picker. Um, he's had blood work done in the past and like when he started picking and it was at a total avian veterinary clinic, the bird clinic in Orange County. And so the only thing he had wrong with him was he was deficient in vitamin A. But so his is all behavioral and it was not medical. So that's one thing about birds in captivity, why I really disagree with people keeping birds. Like when I got him, I thought he's gonna have everything that he needs. He won't have to look for food. The birds got it made. Actually, after having him, I realized he's missing out on foraging for food. He's locked in a cage all day. That may not be the instance for everyone else, but for me, he has to be locked in the cage. Um, they don't get a mate, so he's he's been uh, molting. And so their body undergoes a lot of changes and mood swings when they're molting, and that's probably why he's been biting me a lot. He also just had clung on to me last week. It's healing up now, but it was his prongs. He was actually attached to me. And I was getting him out of the cage one morning, and it was like, cause he was screaming at 5.30 in the morning. He doesn't like to sleep usually past 5.30 in the morning. And he just like laid into me. So uh, just think about these things. And I do advocate, I don't believe birds should be in captivity. And if you do get one, uh, it should be a rescue bird and know what you're getting into. Like I got him and I was his third owner. And shortly after I got him, I had a bird psychologist come out and she was a well-known psychologist and I still have, it didn't solve really any issues, but, uh, but he had a lot of issues from the get-go. Everybody doesn't have those issues, but, but that's an issue I have. And so I just try and bring awareness to this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. And I'm not a vet to give professional advice. Uh, this is just uh, personal experience with me. So always talk to your veterinarian and see what they advise you to do. So thanks for watching and I'm going to put out more videos like this. I hope that you liked it. If you like it and want to see more, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. And I do quite a bit of um, bird shorts, video shorts. And he's just usually like dancing around or doing something fun. So, and when you see him doing fun things, I want you to know it's not all fun and games. So uh, there's a lot to pet ownership, a lot. And so I have a lot to say about it. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.